welcome and good morning. Thank you for being with us here tonight, uh, this morning. Uh, it's good to see you on our screen in the church. I hope it does uh, yourselves well to see your faces, uh, the faces of this community, the faces of this body of Christ. This week, like every week, we ask you to make this time your worship. Do what you need to do at home. Silence your phones, your TVs, your partners. Uh, Light a candle. Do what you need to do uh, to make this time a place of worship uh, of God for you in this community. Um, Glad you're here this morning. As with gladness men of old did the guiding star behold, as with joy they hailed its light, leading onward, beaming bright. So, most gracious Lord, may we ever more be led to Thee. In the heavenly country bright, need they no created light. Thou its light, its joy, its crown, thou its sun which goes not down. Therefore ever may we sing Alleluia's to our King. Our service this morning starts on page 355 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 355. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and And peace peace to God's God's people people on earth. Lord Lord God, God, heavenly King, King, Almighty God and Father, we worship worship you 
we give you thanks. We praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit. In the glory, glory of God, God the Father. Father. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. O God, by the leading of a star, you manifested your only Son to the peoples of the earth. Lead us, who know you now by faith, to your presence, where we may see your glory face to face. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from Acts. While Apollos was in Corinth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? They replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what were you baptized? They replied, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about twelve of them. The Word of the Lord. Let us read together Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord causes the oaks to whirl and strips the forest bare. And in his temple all say, Glory! The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. A reading from the Gospel of Mark. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. 
and people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. May the words that I say and the words that you hear be in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. This morning, our church, along with churches across the country and the world, have two incredible challenges at hand. One is to acknowledge both the baptism of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the God incarnate, perfect image of the loving divine creator and acknowledge the ever-growing rift of hurt, pain, and fear, not simply in this country, but in the world. How do we do two such things? No, I'm asking because I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how to preach the sermon that needs to be preached this morning. I don't know because in some way I feel like it's the same song we've been singing for months, for years, for decades. It's the song that the church has been singing since well before Christ. How long, Lord, how long? How long are cries for justice? How long are cries to be heard? This is not a new refrain. So if you're tired of singing it, you're not alone. You're not alone because your neighbor's tired of singing it. You're not alone because the saints of God who have come before us have tired of singing, have tired of singing it. How long, Lord, how long? This is a challenging time, day in the church, because we find ourselves pulled in two different directions. We are a people who <coughs> seek and love and strive for justice. When we see injustice so plainly displayed in front of our faces on an uncountable number of screens like we have this week, it is only natural for the disconnect between the justice we desire and the justice we see to cause in us a righteous anger, one that fuels us, one that has fueled me this week. But I also know that fire of righteous anger starts to outstay its welcome. Because that fire of righteous anger starts to feel kind of good. I like having a reason to be angry. Maybe I'm the only one. Maybe this is anger management I need to work out with my therapist. 
But I know when I start to put that anger aside, there's a little part of me that starts to seek more of it. What else can I be angry about today? If anger is an adrenaline, maybe I'm just hooked on it. But that anger, that frustration, that need to engage the injustice we see is good and right. It has its time and its place, not only in this world, but in the kingdom. And yet, as full of righteous anger I've been this week, I also find myself almost as an exercise, almost as if this was something, a New Year's resolution I committed to, and I had to get to the gym day after day. I find myself seeking compassion for the same individuals who are the subject of my righteous anger. I look at the faces of those gathered in the Capitol on Wednesday, and as an experiment, I've tried to put myself in their shoes. They feel scared. They feel voiceless. They feel like they're losing their power. And they feel like the only answer they have left is to lash out at the very institution they claim to love. Well, I can't agree or condone, and certainly I condemn the action I know what it feels like to be scared. I know what it feels like to not have a voice. I know what it feels like to have my place of privilege and power crumble in front of my face. And I know what it feels like to be angry in response. I don't know what it's like to break federal law to lash out in my anger. But I've been where those men and women were and frequently, and frequently, frankly and frequently, <laughs> frequently, I acknowledge that's where I am most of the time. So once again, it's cliche, I'm tired of banging the gong, but I find myself in this weird, uncomfortable, cosmic solidarity with the same individuals who caused me so much pain and anger. They're hurting and scared and afraid. I'm hurting, I'm scared, and I'm afraid. At least we have that in common. The difference this morning the difference when I'm at peace, when I'm at one with myself and seeking one with the divine within me and around me, is that the home that I seek to honor, to strengthen, to support and defend, is not the home of this institution, is not the institution of the United States of America is not the Capitol building, nor the White House, nor democracy itself. My home and my body is God's body. And therein lies the difference. This morning, we hear of the moment that Jesus was baptized. Jesus' baptism and our baptism, while alike in practice and in some theology, are quite different. Jesus was being cleansed in the river when we, particularly we, the Episcopal Church, see our baptism. We see it as a death in rebirth, a leaving this realm, if you will. At the moment of our baptism, in that font over there, or the fonts where you were raised, or maybe even in a river yourself, 
your citizenship in this kingdom, the kingdom of temples built to democracy, was revoked. And you became citizens, full family members of the body of Christ here on earth. And this is where the painful disconnect starts to form. Because we are very much people of this world. We love it. We cherish it. We have skin in the game, and we want what's best for the people around us and in the institutions we dwell in. We don't want to let go. But sometimes our baptism declares that we do. Because when we hold on so tightly to these man-made, and in the case of the institution that is this country, I do mean man-made. When we hold on tight to these institutions, we find ourselves at war with the God that we wish to see and the man responsible for their creation. Governments and democracies founded on slavery, war, capitalism, and greed are always going to cause us pain and hurt because at the center is not the righteousness of God, but the folly of man. Ever wonder why we get so frustrated over these man-made institutions? Government, church, we're frustrated because we know what we want them to be. We want them to look more like the body of Christ. But they can't be. There is only one body of Christ. And this morning, we rejoice because we have been baptized into it. We are residents of this institution, but we are not slaves to it. The frustration, the hurt, the pain the anger, the anguish we see in our common conversation these days, we can let that go. It's not easy. I'm not telling you you push a button and there it goes. But when we release ourselves from the attachments of this man-made thing and turn our eyes to the body of Christ, the presence of God within each and every one of us and those in the Capitol on Wednesday, we start to see things differently. We don't meet this institution with rage and anger, but with love and compassion, with hope and peace, because the end goal is not a man-made perfect democracy, but a oneness with the divine. perfect creator, the one that does not call us citizens, but the one that calls us loved. Baptism is a death and a rebirth. Talk about the folly of man. The sprinkling we do on the head of a baby does not appropriately symbolize what happens at our baptism. It's far too weak and mild. If we were to truly understand baptism, we'd get into the freezing lake, the freezing rivers of New Hampshire, and we'd come out refreshed and reborn with our hands removed from the institutions of old and our sights, our hearts, and our minds turned to becoming the beloved kingdom. So this day, I invite us to honor the hurt, the pain, the frustration that we see in this world. Honor the fear of what may become of this terrible and intense time of conflict that we see in this country. And also honor this institution's past, a past founded on hurt, 
division, slavery, and war. We cannot find peace in this man-made institution. True peace, true joy, true hope, true compassion, and true love can only be found when we let go of that and embrace this. The divine within each and every one of us that calls us beloved. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Speaking of man-made institutions, let us now turn our faith and say it together the Nicene Creed found on page 358 in your Book of Common Prayer. Page 358. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all, of all that, that is seen and unseen. We believe, we believe in one, one Lord, Jesus, Jesus Christ, the only, only Son of God, God eternally, eternally begotten of the Father, God, God from God, God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. <coughs> Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will, he will come, come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken to the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers of the people this morning are prayers of the people form one found on page 383 in your Book of Common Prayer. Page 383. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our bishop and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For our president, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy for this town of Londonderry, for our surrounding communities, every town, city, and community, and those who live in them. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widow and orphans, for the sick and the suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. 
This week, please hold in your prayers those on our parish prayer list. Joe, Kisser, Ruby, Cheryl, Steve, Liz, Carol, Pauline, Connie, Sully, Carol, Bill, Karen, Diane, Benjamin, Jane, Penny, Rita, June, Robert, Ed, Beckett, Kim, Lori, Penny, Myra, Susan, John, Gay, Kathy, Deanie, Mary, Grace, Lorette, Oliver, Anne, Bev, Dawn, Peter, Denny, Joan, Nancy, Suzanne, Jerry, Tiffany, Sharon, Jane, Michael, and Sarah. We pray for those on our parish cycle of prayer. Lori Howell, Mike, Mandy, Matt, and Kyle Jasper, and Nancy Gerald. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and for the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, for all the departed, particularly Eugene Joseph Kudo, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. From deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering, without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. God of all power and love, we give thanks for your unfailing presence and the hope you provide in times of uncertainty and loss. Send your Holy Spirit to enkindle in us your holy fire. Revive us to live as Christ's body in the world, a people who pray, worship, learn, break bread, share life, heal neighbors, bear good news, seek justice, rest and grow in the Spirit. Wherever and however we gather, unite us in common prayer and send us in common mission that we and the whole creation might be restored and renewed through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. In the communion of the Blessed Mother Mary, Peter, our patron saint, and all the saints. Let us commend ourselves and one another and all our life to Christ. To, to thee, thee, O Lord, Lord our, our God. God. Lord, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In your compassion, have mercy on us. I'm mixing up the post prayers of the people and the absolution. Lord, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In your compassion, look upon us and all who turn to you for help. For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful, merciful God, God, we confess, we confess that, that we have sinned against you in, in thought, word, and deed by, by what we have done, done and by, and by what, what we, we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways 
the glory, the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins through the Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Exchange the peace in the chat with your family at home, with Michael and Emery. Peace be with you. And with you, also with you, Colin. And Michael. Peace. Two quick announcements before we continue this morning that have gone out in email, uh, but, uh, well, actually three, uh, and worth uh, sharing here during our stream. The first, um, hopefully, as you've seen by now, there, we're having major mail issues here at the church um, to save money on heating. And with Karen's time, we've had mail forwarded to Karen's house. Um, that, along with a delay in the United States Postal Service here in Londonderry, um, your checks are not getting cashed nearly as, as fast as they used to be. Um, we ask your patience. Uh, the biggest uh, issue that has ar arisen with this is that some of the pledge statements that had been submitted, sorry, some of the pledges that were given in December did not get to the bank until January, which will impact some of your year-end giving statements. Because of the current tax laws, that m does not impact many people in their charitable giving, but if you did give a gift in December and it will impact your charitable giving for your 2020 taxes, please contact Karen West and we can find a way to um, show that that was given in December. Another uh, announcement, as you see, uh, we are not having live readers here in the church right now to limit the number of individuals who uh, gather in this space. We have a wonderful team of readers uh, who read in our church when we can. Um, and we've asked them to start reading and submitting their readings digitally. There are some readers who are not comfortable reading and recording in front of a camera or webcam, and we understand that. And uh, no matter how you feel about it, you are loved. But this is an excellent opportunity to invite some of you who have maybe not been readers in the past to join that ministry. If you are interested in becoming a reader and to read a uh, reading that will be on the stream um, on Sunday mornings, contact Sally Nelson. Her email is in uh, the weekly announcements, and we'd love to get you on the schedule. Finally, the last Sunday of this month, January 31st, is our annual meeting. What an annual meeting looks like when we're gathered like this is unknown, but it should be marked on your calendar that that is the date of the annual meeting. More information is to follow. But now that I've announced it to you, Marlene is not going to bug me that I didn't make the announcement. <laughs> You're welcome, Marlene. <laughs> That's all. We miss you. I miss seeing you in person. I know brighter days are ahead, and we look forward to them. But until then, know that you're missed. Ascribe, Lord, all honor and glory do his name. Bring <laughs> offerings and come into his courts. Shall we gather at the river? Where bright angel hosts have trod, with this crystal tide forever flowing by the throne of God. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. 
on the margin of the river, washing up its silver spray. We will walk and worship ever all the happy golden day. Ere we reach the shining river, lay we every burden down. Grace our spirits will deliver and provide our robe and crown. Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Soon we'll reach the shining river. Soon our pilgrimage will cease. Soon our happy hearts will quiver with a melody of Yes, we'll gather at the river, the beautiful, the beautiful river. Gather with the saints at the river that flows by the throne of God. Our service of Holy Eucharist continues with Eucharistic Prayer A, found on page 361 in your Book of Common Prayer, page 361. I'm not hearing myself in my monitor. Are you, uh, is the sound still coming through? Okay, that's fine. Good. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, because you gave Jesus Christ, your only Son, to be born for us, who by the mighty power of the Holy Spirit was made perfect man of the flesh of the Virgin Mary, his mother, so that we might be delivered from the bondage of sin and receive power to become your children. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, God of power and might, Heaven and and earth earth are are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed Blessed is the the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, Take Eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. When he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ Christ has has died. died. Christ Christ is is risen. 
Christ, Christ will, will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom the power, and the, and the glory are yours, now, now and forever. forever. Amen. The gifts of God for the people of God. May we take them in remembrance that Christ died for us, and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel his mighty power and his grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, you have you graciously, graciously accepted, accepted us as living, living members, members of your, of your Son, Son, our Savior, Savior Jesus Christ. Christ. And you have, have fed us with spiritual food and the, the sacrament, sacrament of his body and blood. Send us, us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and, love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart, through Christ, through Christ our, our Lord. Lord. Amen. Jesus, we believe that you are truly present in the blessed sacrament of the altar. We love you above all things and long for you in our souls. Since we cannot receive you in the sacrament of your body and blood, come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, Lord Jesus, 
and let us never feel separated from you. May we live in you, in you and us, in this life and the life to come. Amen. Amen. Life is short. We do not have much time to gladden the hearts of those who make this journey with us. So be swift to love and make haste to be kind. May the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Three kings of Ori and Tar, bearing gifts we traverse afar, field and fountain, moor and mountain, following yonder star. Oh, oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding. Guide us to thy perfect light. Glorious now, behold him arise, King and God and sacrifice. Hem sings Alleluia, Alleluia, the earth replies. Oh, oh, star of wonder, star of night, star with royal beauty bright, westward leading, still proceeding, guide us to thy perfect light. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. If you're able to stick around, we'll join each other in the Zoom chat for a little bit of post-church fellowship after the prelude.